All right, you know we all love to talk about computers on this channel, and today's topic of discussion is my baby, my personal rig, my, ironically, my second built computer, but my first personal computer, my baby right here. She came in around $2,500, and pretty much the discussion of this video is gonna be how I came to building this, this computer, the parts that I used, how they hold up today. I mean, shit, they better hold up for another 10 years, all the money I spent on this. Yeah, but pretty much how I would spend that money today if I had that money, if I had that same budget, what type of PC I would build. But if you guys do enjoy the video, please make sure you guys leave a like, comment, and subscribe. What you guys think? I mean, you know, you guys have been showing a lot of love and support in the video, so thank you all very much as we try to reach 2,000 subs eventually. I don't know when, you know, we're 800 subs off, but eventually we're gonna, that's gonna be the next goal. So thank you guys very much for your love and support. But let's get into the video. Yes, I'm that nerd that kept all his boxes. Hey man, it's my first PC build. I have more of them, I'm not even gonna lie, but I didn't wanna clear them out, you know, I already had to take my dollar, whatever. That's besides the point. The motherboard that I'm rocking in this bad boy right here is the ROG Maximus 11 Hero from Asus. It's a motherboard. I mean, it still holds its value up today. It's still $280, which is pretty crazy. But in terms of like, you know, the things that you use for a motherboard, it has all the ports that I need. I mean, you know, rather than the, I needed to get an external USB hub for a USB 2.0. That's because not all motherboards have like four of them. So I needed like an extra three more for the RG, RGB fans. But we'll get into this later, but I'm able, I was able to overclock my CPU to 5.0 gigahertz, but it was getting a little too hot. So, I mean, it was around 85 C when I was rendering my videos. So I was like, ah, let me cut it back a little. So I'll, it's overclocked at 4.8 gigahertz now. And we'll get back into CPU a little bit later, but in terms of a motherboard, this is a quality motherboard, no issues. Personally, I love it. Do I regret spending $280 on a motherboard? No. But, you know, with motherboards, you can always, you know, cut back, you can always go a little bit more higher. It's all depending on what you want and what you need. For my overclocking needs, it's been perfect, no issue. So for the RAM, we are rocking the Trident RGB RAM, rated at 3200 megahertz, 16 gigabyte kit. It's RAM, it's perfect, I mean, Right now, 16 gigabytes is exactly like what you, it's kind of even overkill now because the minimum for most games on PC is around four, which really recommended is eight. Some games push it at 12, but I think the only game to do that was Jedi, uh, the Star Wars game. But then I think they even cut it down to eight. So for RAM, 16 gigabytes is the sweet spot. 3200 megahertz speed is also the sweet spot as well because it's the best price of performance at the time though. This shit, the RAM that I spent, I think I spent like 160 on this kit. Now you can get it for under $90. So the price difference, like RAM is something that very is very fluctuates a lot within PCs. RAM and GPU, uh, GPUs, they really fluctuate in terms of their pricing. So right now, if I wanted to add another gig, another 16 gigabyte kit, like I can, I could have done 32 gigs for the price of what I paid for the 16 back then. So it's kind of insane. I mean, you know, if you're on a Ryzen platform, you do benefit from faster RAM. So if I was on a Ryzen or at the time, if I wanted to go up higher, there kind of really wasn't, you know, any leeway for me in terms of my budget. So this was the perfect sweet spot. This is where I wanted to be at. But if now, if I really wanted to change that, I could, for the price that I paid, get high rated speed RAM and maybe even more. All right, let's talk about the big boys. First, we're going to be talking about Boom. This was the dude about a year ago, the Core i9-9900K, freaking Intel, <laughs> Intel CPU. This was the dude. I mean, I believe it just came out a few months prior to when I purchased it, as well as the graphics card, but we'll get into that. And this is, for raw gaming performance, this is, even today, is still your best option to get the most FPS out of your games. This thing has held up perfectly for me. I had it overclocked at 5.0 gigahertz, like I said before, now it's at 4.8. I did my video editing, my streaming on it when I streamed for the summer, and it's held up fantastically. Like, honestly, this thing, the, the box, bro, just not even a box, that, the dodecahedron, whatever the fuck this thing is, it is lit, bro. Like, honestly, this CPU is fantastic. If you were to buy it today though, I don't think it's your best option. We'll probably go into further options that would kind of supplement this because there are better options on the Ryzen platform, but we will get into that. But man, when I tell you, if you still have this, this thing, this thing's gonna be fantastic for years to come. 
raw gaming performance, video editing, streaming, everything that you need, this bad boy is gonna be able to handle it and even more. Before we get into this bad boy right here, let's talk about the CPU cooler. I'm rocking the NZXT Kraken X62 CPU cooler. Um, no issues in terms of the hardware itself, like it failing on me or the pump, but kind of the software is kind of a little wonky. I'm having issues with my case fans right now as well in terms of their them not being able to me not being able to actually change their lighting. But I think that could be changed if I get a new uh, USB 2.0 header. That's gonna be resolved, but. You gotta get into this bad boy. So for the final part, we have the ROG Strix Gaming RTX 2080. Not a 2080 Super, not a 2080 Ti, the 2080. At the time, um, there was no Super variants. There was a 2080 Ti, of course, but this dude, man, this was uh, a few months, I bought it a few months after it, it launched. So I spent $800, $870 on it. Definitely worth it though, honestly, like this graphics card has been perfect for me. Thermals, not an issue. Like I could, I haven't even overclocked it. That's a crazy thing. I haven't even overclocked my graphics card and I have no issues getting over 150 frames plus at 1440p on like Rainbow and Fortnite and stuff. It just crushes any game I throw at it. And I absolutely love it. It's gonna be my graphics card for a long time. You know, unless Nvidia wants to, you know, toss me a 2080 Ti, you know, but nobody in Nvidia watches me anyway, but. All jokes aside though, like this graphics card is absolutely amazing. And the fact that they released a 2080 Super and then it's even cheaper than what I paid for this kind of makes my heart ache, but like, I'm not gonna get greedy. I absolutely love this graphics card. I have no issues with it at all. It's been actually the most consistent part of this whole build. And honestly, like you guys can tell how much I love this build. Definitely in terms of like, I actually said this in my in a previous video about why I switched, but this has been the greatest, like, investment that I've ever made in terms of gaming. It's the greatest gaming decision I've ever made. And maybe it might even be the best business decision, too, because, like, shit, I'm, I'm enjoying building computers. You know, I built that computer for you guys. You guys really did enjoy it and loved it. So, you know, I really hope that you guys did enjoy this segment of the video right now we're going to get into how i would spend you know i love my baby but how i would spend two thousand five hundred dollars if i was going to build a pc today so if you guys have that budget you guys can kind of get an idea of what you can do with your budget and your money so let's transition all right so we are on our favorite site pc part picker and pretty much what i've done right here this portion of the video is going to be if i had the same budget that i had a year ago of two thousand five hundred dollars how would i spend that on a pc with today's current prices and climate so this pc is going to be an absolute beast i mean anything in terms of video editing or gaming or streaming it is going to absolutely crush whatever you can do so I'm gonna show you guys the parts. As you guys can see, I already have the list picked out. I'm gonna show you, you show you the parts and explain why I decided to do this. So, right now we have the Ryzen 3900X 12 core, 24 thread processor, and holy shit, ad puts this bad boy to shame if I'm being honest. So, for even less money, I mean, if you wanna talk in terms of productivity, this is gonna put it to shame, but for raw game performance, you know, my baby still got it right here. But, all jokes aside, 12 cores, 24 threads is going to absolutely crush any blender renders or what, whatever thing, metric that you use to test CPUs, it is going to absolutely destroy that. Video editing is going to be ridiculously amazing with 12 cores and 34, uh, 24 threads. Definitely, if I had to build a PC, it would definitely be with this processor, pr processor with this budget. And with the leeway that we have, we might be able to even push that up to a 3950X, which holy shit, we're not even going to get into that. Um, for our CPU cooler, we have the Corsair H100i RGB Platinum. Right now, I've used this uh, C, uh, this uh, cooler twice. So in my friend's build and in my in my boss's son's, my boss's son, I, I built a computer for uh, her son. He has the same cooler as well and no issues at all in terms of cooling performances. One has a um, 3700X and the other one also has a Core i9-9900K. So no issues with cooling at all. In terms of memory, so this is where we get the big upgrade. So we have 32 gigs of 3600 rated speed RAM. We have the Trident Z Neo 
RAM, which is specifically built for Ryzen because Ryzen does benefit from four faster uh, RAM speeds. So 3600 megahertz is going to be absolutely insane. And with the leeway in this budget, you could probably even bump that up to 4000. Who knows? So for our storage solutions, I chose the Samsung Evo 500 GB M M NVMe M.2 drive. So a lot of modern, modern motherboards have the M.2 slot. So easy, you just like slide it right in. Like if we, I don't know if you guys know, but if you ever like seen like ribbon cables and like game consoles and stuff, you take them out. That's kind of how like the M.2 operates. And it's insanely fast. Like in terms of speeds right now, the M.2 is the fastest speed that we have. And I also add a uh, tacked on, I also tacked on the 860 Samsung Evo one terabyte uh, solid state drive. No issues at all. I have two of those in, one's 500 gigabytes. The other one is one terabyte and no problems at all. I've been perfectly fine. I absolutely love it. For our graphics card, the big boy, we have the RTX 2080 Super Gaming X Trio uh, video card uh, GPU, which is from MSI. Actually, this is one that I've also used in another build with my, my um, this PC I use in my, my boss's son's build, as I stated before, $738, bro. A mere, like that's a hundred and freaking fifty dollars, almost hundred fifty dollars more than what I spent, and that's even better than mine. So, I'm not saying that you know I'm a little salty. I'm a little salty, but hey, it's what it is. When you when you spend money on new technology and you know on when things first come out, you're always gonna expect to pay a premium, and that's just the case. I mean, when you're an early adopter, things always cut down in price a year, two years down the line. So, that's 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 the risk you gotta take. But for our case, we have I you know. NZXT probably has my most favorite cases. Like, I absolutely love this case. And the H500, uh, the H510 Elite has two RGB fans in the front, and it's absolutely sexy. Like, I honestly love it so much. Definitely, if I was building, uh, doing a new build, it would be in that case. And to top it off, we have the Corsair RMX 850 watt power supply, which should be more than enough power to power our whole system. No issues whatsoever. But that's where we're going to end the video off guys if you guys have any questions if you guys have any bills that you guys want me to review you can always shoot me a dm on twitter you know hey you know make a part list say you know where can i spend more money or less money etc let me know because I'm, I'm more than happy to help you guys out or in the comments but please make sure you guys do leave a like comment and subscribe i really do appreciate it man we are pushing to 2,000 subscribers so like i said i don't know when we're gonna make it but we're gonna push for it so wish me luck guys Thank you for your support and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Peace out.